everyone welcome to this module on fungal infections part 1 when we talk about fungal infections of the skin we classify them into three types depending upon the level of involvement in the skin and how they spread the ones that spread by touch affect superficial part that is the epidermis they are called as superficial infections the deeper infections which actually enter the skin by a penetrating injury these are called as subcutaneous mycosis and the deep or the systemic infections are the one which are actually disseminated throughout the body they come to the skin via blood seen in immunocompromised immunosuppressed patients who have systemic infections now amongst the fungal infections the superficial important ones are pityriasis versicolor tinea nigra piedra candidiasis and tinea so coming to pityriasis versicolor pityriasis versicolor is a disease which is caused by a commensal fungi which lives in the human body as a commensal especially in the sebaceous areas now the name of this fungus is malassezia globosa which is the most common cause of pityriasis versicolor and the second most common is malassezia for for this is a commensal uh, organism you know it stays as a yeast in normal conditions but in hot and humid conditions it converts to hyphae so yeast which can also convert to hyphae that means it's a dimorphic fungus and that is when it causes the disease the initial lesion with which the disease begins is a peri follicular scale because this fungus lives around the hair so it begins as a peri follicular scale then the lesions increase to have these typical clinical features including multiple hypopigmented scaly macules on the upper back and the upper chest so the classic description which you are going to get in your exam is multiple hypo pigmented scaly macules on the upper back and the upper chest sometimes lesions can also be hyperpigmented that is there in the name of the disease versicolor so you can have both hypo and hyperpigmented lesions in these areas hypopigmentation is because the fungus produces azelaic acid which reduces melanin production lesions become light in color hyperpigmentation is because sometimes the fungus can induce production of larger melanosomes which can make the skin darker so both hypopigmented and hyperpigmented lesions if you look at them they are present discreetly and they can also coalesce to form lesions with polycyclic margins the scaling here is typically a fine fur furaceous scaling so in certain diseases you have to remember the characteristic description of the scale here it is a fur furaceous scaling even though you see the scaling when the patient comes but in certain patients due to the sweat due to the moistness you may not be able to see the scaling there scratching a lesion with your nail can increase the scaling okay so scratching the lesion with the nail can increase the scaling this is called as the nail scratch sign also called as the pestner's sign also called as the coup de ongle sign okay so this is nothing but exaggeration of scaling by scratching when you do a koh examination from the scale what is the finding that you see you will see the fungus existing as both yeast as well as hyphae so these hyphae look like the spaghetti and the yeast look like the meatballs so this appearance is called as the spaghetti and meatball appearance can also be called as banana and grape appearance on woods lamp examination all these lesions of pityriasis versicolor typically exhibit a pale yellow fluorescence so what you see is a pale yellow fluorescence you can remember it as pv shows py so p versicolor shows a pale yellow fluorescence on woods lamp treatment can be done topically 
where we can use different azoles as creams and lotions then selenium sulfide lotion can also be used orally again fluconazole itraconazole ketoconazole can be used but more important is what cannot be used cannot be used is terbinafin and grisio fulvin okay so remember the negative uh, words here what cannot be used is terbinafin and grisio fulvin so next we come to piedra which is a superficial infection of the cuticle of the hair shaft here the fungus produces small stone like concretions on the surface of the hair which is why it is also called as trichomycosis nodosa nodosa are these small node like concretions on the hair shaft depending upon the cause and the morphology of the lesions it is of two types black piedra and white piedra black piedra is caused by piedra hortai and here it is more commonly found on the scalp hair there are black hard adherent nodes on the hair shaft so what you get here are black hard adherent concretions on the hair shaft while white piedra is caused by trichosporon bigeli this is commonly seen on the axillary the pubic hair sometimes on the eyelashes also here you see these typical white concretions on the hair shaft they are white in color they are soft to touch and they are loosely adherent on the hair shaft in the treatment the best is to shave the hair if it cannot be shaved treat it with anti fungals now next is candidiasis candida is most commonly caused by candida albicans which lives as a commensal otherwise on the human body on the skin in the mucosa it lives as a commensal but in certain situations it can cause disease what are those patient is suffering from diabetes mellitus uncontrolled sugars high sugars a relative state of immunosuppression here then a female who's pregnant other causes of immunosuppression include hiv organ transplant patient cancer chemotherapy patients and somebody who's on long term antibiotics long term steroids or suffers from an autoimmune endocrinopathy which can be you know a reason why the patient would have chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis so these are all the precipitating factors the risk factors for developing of candidiasis patient can have oral candidiasis intertrigo paronychia bulbo vaginal candidiasis as well as balanopostitis in the men when it comes to oral candidiasis oral candidiasis is actually of two types hyperplastic candidiasis and atrophic candidiasis in hyperplastic as you can see in the picture here there is a white membrane in the oral cavity so this is also called as white candidiasis while in atrophic the tongue and the mucosa can become red and atrophic so this is also called as red candidiasis now coming to the hyperplastic oral candidiasis there can be two variants acute and chronic acute is generally seen as a case of oral thrush where a patient develops this kind of a white pseudo membrane on the oral cavity because of this pseudo membrane it is also called as pseudo membranous candidiasis all the risk factors are there for this but one more important risk factor that you have to consider is a patient of asthma who is taking inhalers in the wrong technique so the steroids are getting deposited in the oral cavity leading to a risk of oral candidiasis in this this pseudo membrane when you try to wipe it off with a gauze can it be wiped or not yes it can be wiped off leaving behind a raw bleeding erosion so remember oral candidiasis the membrane can be rubbed off chronic hyperplastic candidiasis is relatively rare when it happens it is a risk factor for developing of oral squamous cell carcinoma so this is a 
pre malignant condition of the oral cavity atrophic candidiasis is also of two types acute atrophic candidiasis chronic atrophic candidiasis here as you see there is an atrophy of the uh, papillae on the tongue and it appears smooth flat and red acute atrophic candidiasis generally happens when the patient has had a course of antibiotics so this is also called as antibiotic sore mouth while chronic atrophic candidiasis happens in old patients who are using dentures who don't maintain proper hygiene so this is also called as denture mouth okay in both of these you see that the skin has become smooth and atrophic they present with intense burning sensation in the mouth treatment for all of these is fluconazole then we have candidial intertrigo intertrigo as the word suggest will be an infection of the intertriginous areas which are the skin folds like the neck the finger webs the toe webs the axilla as well as the groin so these are the intertriginous areas in the women even the submammary and the intermammary folds patient presents with a typical lesion of candidial intertrigo where you see maceration of the skin so the skin as you see here is macerated then there is peripheral scaling in the lesions here you see the le uh, lesions have scaling in the periphery here also there is scaling in the periphery and lastly a very important feature of candidial infection satellite lesions these all smaller lesions in the periphery these are all satellite lesions you see these in this child also who's developing intertrigo in the neck fold a very common thing you see in babies in fact this image was asked in neat pg 2019 as well presence of satellite lesion often gives you a hint towards the diagnosis of candida and helps you differentiate this from tinea then we have candidial balanopostitis which can develop in men who are diabetic you see redness and swelling of the prepuce and in some patients there are also longitudinal fissures that you see on the prepuce in the women it causes valvular vaginal candidiasis typical thick white curdy discharge is seen associated with itching paronychia is uh, like something which is more of a multifactorial origin seen in patients who have chronic detergent use who do frequent washing of hands so washing of hands with use of detergent that tends to damage the cuticle so the cuticle here is damaged and all the allergens the irritants the fungus they can all enter the nail fold here thereby leading to a swelling and redness of the nail folds which is what is paronychia chronic paronychia remember c for chronic c for candida this causes chronic paronychia since it is um, seen in patients who are frequently washing uh, clothes utensils you see it more commonly in housewives and clothes washers whenever there is a fungal infection whether it be candida whether it be any fungal infection next investigation is always a koh mount what do you see in candida in candida you will see these budding yeast so what you see are number 1 budding yeast and number 2 these chains these budding yeast sometimes don't separate from each other and they are visible as long chains this is an appearance which is called as pseudo hyphae so you see budding yeast as well as pseudo hyphae in the coh mount treat it with azoles depending upon the you know extent of the disease you can use topically in the form of creams and lotions or oral uh, can be taken if it is more of a extensive disease with this we finish our discussion on fungal infection <music>